bij de podcast Inspirerende Leiders van Nu, editie Ambitie. En vandaag zijn dit mijn gasten. Hey, welcome. We're back. We're in series seven. And this is edition uh, three of series seven. And this is the first podcast in English for us with a foreign leader. And I'm going to introduce you by uh, calling out what's your name and who are you and where are you working from? Yeah, well, my name is uh, Irina Kurkina and I work in actually I currently have two companies that I deal with. It's Academy Smart and Salix and both are located in Ukraine. The same as me. So I'm talking to you from Ukraine today. From the Ukraine. And are you, in which part of the Ukraine are you uh, working? Because Ukraine is in war, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's a big country. Yeah, it's a big country. So so where is that located? So the war is on the, the east side? Yeah. Well, I usually normally live in Kharkiv, which is on the very east, very close to the border. But right now I'm in, more in the central part of the country, in Poltava region, in the city called Kremenchuk. So, yeah, it's it's actually all right here. It's all right. Okay. Um Um, and you're working for uh, two compa- companies. Eh? In, in which uh, function are you working uh, there? With Academy Smart, I'm taking the position of uh, Chief Business Officer, which you know implies everything connected with business development, sales, coordination with marketing. So everything about and together with business. And Salix is my new business that I started recently and it's a consultancy also for business development and sales. Yeah. And we know each other from LinkedIn, right? We have a common uh, common uh, uh, man from Holland, yeah. Wout Weber, which connected us. And he said, you have to check her out. She's really, uh, really remarkable. <laughs> like the device. Eh? And, uh, <laughs> Hey, and um, in your uh, in your function as leader, what's your perceptive? Uh, how what's your style of leadership? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think I always try to be as calm as possible, which is not always easy being a leader, right? Yeah. Um, I always try to be constructive and base all my decisions first of all by discussing with my team because. I mean, if we look at Academy Smart, my team currently is about 11 people. Yeah. And I also, you know, considering that I'm not working alone, our department is always always interconnected with other departments. We have to always coordinate our efforts. Um, I always try to ground my decisions with either some analytics or data so that, you know, um, all the decisions we make would be not just as we want them to be or we envision, but also grounded with some data so that we can at least, you know, have something tangible, a little bit more tangible than just thoughts and ideas. So if to summarize the question about what's the leadership style, I guess I'm trying to always find a compromise with people but also to not to say push my decisions, but you have to be able to defend your thoughts and decisions, especially when you work in a competitive environment. Okay, thanks. Very nice. <laughs> so so it's always with, uh, the, uh, yeah, discuss with your team and uh, uh, support your decisions with grounded uh, data, which is tangled, which makes it tangible for everyone to, to work around. Okay. Hey, cool. we're, we're going to start with uh, the first exercise, which is your favorite uh, guilty pleasure song. Okay. Uh, we're going <laughs> to... Uh, in, intervene it later on, but uh, what is it? What's your favorite guilty pleasure song? Well, that was uh, a hard choice <laughs> because yeah. I love music and I have so many favorite songs. But if I would have to still, if I still must choose one, I think that would be the one I shared is Poets of the Folk Carnival of Rest because I, I guess I've heard this song maybe when I was 15, so about 17 years ago. And it's still with me, and it means so much to me. So I guess that's the one. 
That's nice. And, and what's the, the, the band name or the, or, or the artist name? Yeah, it's the band called Poets of the Fall. It's a Finnish band. Let's take a listen how it, uh, how it sounds. What's your connection with this song? Why do you love this song? Well, I actually, if, if you look at my playlists, I have much more minor songs, right, than in major. Um, yeah. I don't know why. Maybe that's just because the minor th- uh, songs just resonate much better with me. That's the first point. Um, then the second, just because the meaning in there is, has always been relevant either 15 years ago or right now because you know as in in in, in those lines in the song it's just uh nothing is matter and everything around is just carnival of rest just look at what has been happening in the world outside the last several years it has so much meaning and it resonates a lot with me yeah in 1995, uh, I wrote a uh, I wrote a song because because I, because I played in a band called Kingdom of Desire. I, I also record singles, etc. Still, I do, uh, but I record a song Teardrop, which was also about the world. Eh? Mm-hmm. Uh, like uh, we opened our eyes, uh, time to look around. We didn't uh, go about it, but our minds were crushing down. Government succeed to spoil <laughs> it all. Everything goes wrong. Stand up and face what's going on. Something like that. Mm. And it was about uh, teardrops that uh, there's so much uh, going wrong and we need uh, strong leaders to fix the problems in the world. What do you think about it? Yeah, well, when you were singing, I actually thought, I don't know why, it just popped up in my head that you also know this song, Wonderful Life, right? Yeah. Um, and when you listen to it and you don't read um, the lyrics, which I did maybe like 15 years ago, I thought it was about a wonderful life. But it, uh, in, in, in an essence, it's about totally different things that the life is wonderful, but it's full of bad things. And yeah. we just, you know, but, but I agree. Um, and considering all this, like you said, when it's all about the world, about the governments that spoil everything, blah, blah, blah. Um, it's still important to have this ability to see the beauty around you, right? So yeah. because if you're going to focus only on something bad or being depressed by something all the time, you're just not going to be happy. But seeing the beauty around is, is an amazing skill and it helps a lot, actually, especially in challenging situations. Yeah, I think that's right. If you focus on the positive, you still can see the beautiful things in life. 
but also see uh, what things needs to be fixed and need solutions and, and talk with people about it and, and support people who mm-hmm. are uh, activating the right uh, decisions and the right actions, then the world will be beautiful still. And yeah, that's true. I agree. Okay, we're going to do the next exercise. How it works, I have a, a few questions and uh, those questions are uh, regular. I got 28 of them. Mm-hmm. And you're just going to pick out uh, a number and call out the number. And I'm going to uh, ask you a question and be as uh, fast and positive and also uh, authentic as you can in answering the question. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you may know you may call out a number. Oh, let's go one by one. One so by it's one. going to be one. Yeah. One. Uh, what's your most important lesson which you've learned from a mentor or coach or a friend? Oh, yeah, well, be be yourself. Um, listen to others, but at the same time, don't lose your personality. Don't get drowned in, in other ideas. Defend your point of view. Yeah. And how how does that resonate in your uh, in your function as a leader? Oh, that learned me to defend <laughs> my yeah. point of view because uh, when I was just starting and when I got this leadership position, I mean, I was struggling sometimes to defend my ideas. But the the, the further you go, the better you get at that. Yeah, true. And what, did you undergo a transformation for that? So you had to learn something which you over one? Yeah, well, being in business development in general is constantly stepping out of your comfort zone. And many things that I work with and deal with today and what I, what I know and what I can do was something unusual for me at some point of the time. So, yeah, I guess I did. I became more open-minded, you know, eager to meet new people. I've always been, but I guess it also goes like, you know, it's like the rolling ball. The more people you meet and the more knowledge you get from them, the more you want to get further. Yeah, that's true. And I also also find it remarkable that the older you get, the, the more you become aware that you know a lot, but you just know a tiny yeah. part. <laughs> so it's very important to listen listen to learn learn to listen right yeah indeed okay, okay we're gonna go to the next question what, which number oh let it be five let, let it be five that's the question uh what's uh an uh, opposite state uh point of view which you have on a, a more common uh vision or uh, conviction uh, about life. Mm-hmm. So you mean if my point of view is opposite to the common? Yeah, true. <sighs> Those are hard questions. <laughs> I'm not actually sure about majority of convictions or prejudices because I try not to dwell on them pretty much at all. But... Um, I mean, it, I, I think it also depends on the society and the country that you live in, right? Because different societies have different convictions. Yeah. So um, in Ukraine, before we started, I guess people were a little bit more close. And you, if you, for example, you know, go, go down the street, walk down the street, and you might see that people were sometimes a little bit blue, a little bit, you know, in their own thoughts. I've always had a conviction that... You have to be kind to people around, even if they don't want this or even if they don't appreciate this. Uh, you still, you know, like in, I don't remember, I guess it was in the song, kill them with your kindness. You know that? So, yeah. Because I believe in paid forward, if you have ever seen this movie. Um, yes. So, that's I guess that's a good motto. Try to be as kind as you can, even if people are being rude or bad to you. 
Yeah, nice. But that's a, a, a really great uh, view on life eh? because you stimulate and support others in kindness. Eh? So kill them with your kindness and pay it forward. It, it's a really <laughs> great belief. <laughs> okay, next question. Which number? I'll let it be 15. Uh, 15, let's see. Uh, what's your uh, daily uh, morning routine? Well, the first thing I do, except for, you know, normal daily toilet stuff is uh, I walk the dog. That's the first thing I do in the morning. I have a dog, so I have to walk him. Yes. So that's pretty much the most important thing I do in the morning. <laughs> and then it's coffee and work. Yeah, coffee and work. And, uh, and uh, from, from which time to which time are you at work? Oh, it's really flexible and it depends. Some days it might be from 9 a.m. Some days it might be from 11 a.m. Depends on what, what, what I was doing previously because I'm uh, usually on the later uh, side of, of, of the thing, so to say. So I can work late hours. Yes. For me, it's harder to start early in the morning, but I can work like 10 p.m., 11 p.m. And that's fine with me. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay, yeah. next question. From 1 till 28. Name a number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, three. Or we've already been there, no? Yeah, three is, is a great number. What's your favorite mistake which you've uh, had in, in the past, uh, which also gave you a great learning lesson? No. <laughs> uh, one of the best mistakes, I think, and one of the most important lessons was... Um, I mean, when I just start, when when I just began, uh, became a leader, I was always very impulsive, always over emotional, um, and I sometimes I have to admit this could be not very good with my colleagues and teammates because you know when you when you are new, you have to, as I've said, I was struggling with defending my point of view, with getting the things that I wanted to be done. But uh, one of my colleagues, um, she told me like that, um, it's not going to work this way if you're going to stay this way. This type of leadership and this type of communication just not going to work. And, you know, such things, they hit very hard. But I started to listen. And I think my husband, he also taught me a lot to be much calmer, and much more, um, you know, polite with people, especially on the work. Yeah. So that was a hard, that was a very emotional moment for me, but I, I, I learned a lot. So I re re revisited my whole communication model, my whole leadership model, and that was a very important um, lesson. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great lesson uh, to, to learn. Eh? Yeah. So, so if you resume this uh, this exercise, then you could say, well, uh, your best lesson which you learn from a mentor is listen to others and defend, still defending your position or point of view. It means that you need to uh, consolidate your stretching mode, is be open minded, and uh, you have to meet people and talk to people. Yeah. Uh, the opposite point of view on common uh, prejudices and uh, beliefs are that cultures are different. And in Ukraine, uh, what I guess is people were some some kind more, a little bit more introverted, more blue orientated, as, as you call it out. And uh, you try to reach out to them and uh, kill them with your kindness and pay that skill forward. Uh, very nice. In your morning routine, you walk the dog, you take uh, a cup of coffee and, and you go to work and you have flexible working hours, uh, which means uh, depending on the situation, you yep. just adjust and are flexible. And in your favorite mistakes and the most important lesson, uh, it is that in former days you were sometimes a little bit impulsive or em over emotional. Uh, that's not good for your colleagues or teammates. And uh, uh, it, it it extended by pressuring them on uh, getting something done. But you you have learned you have to listen sometimes. So you started listening and you're much more calmer, even with the help of your, your uh, husband to stimulate. Yeah. Uh, that that kind of um, yeah skill, 
and uh, you're also uh, more polite in communication with your teammates so you get more done and you hear yeah. more from them what their point of visions or point of views are right yeah yeah we're going to the next ex exercise and uh, in the next exercise i'm so curious what's your story because you're 31 you're a leader of uh, two companies tell me what's the story which led you to this uh, yeah this uh, present state of being uh, and state of living and state of working as a leader for two companies what's the story behind that yeah well um i think if you ask majority of people dealing with business development and sales nobody would say that they have ever dreamt about this job or um, studied for this job because there is simply no study for this type of work, which I find very pity. Um, so I was actually finishing my master degree when I was uh, 21, a 21 year old, so about 10 years ago. Um, That's young, eh? Tw 21 years and a master degree, is, so you're very smart. <laughs> well, I, it just yeah. happened to be this way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's true. But twenty one, it's so still it's a young age to to get a master degree or at the early stage, right? Yeah, I guess I was, uh, and I was studying um, international business, finance, and all that type of things. And I had very good professors in my university. One of them proposed me to consider, as she said, it was a marketing job, and I've never was interested in marketing. But I was young. I wanted to find a job. I wanted to stop working. So I thought, why not? You know give it a try i that's another kind of my motto it doesn't hurt to try so yeah. i always give it a try so i accept it at least to go and see if the guys if if i like them if i like the work the job whatsoever so i went i spoke to them Everything looked perfect, all right. So, and they promised me to teach me everything. It appeared to be not marketing, but sales, business development position. And that's how my journey started it's about 10 years ago. So, yeah, but through the time, I mean, right now, I'm still with this company that hired me 10 years ago. And uh, these people are really great. And I value one of the things that I value the most in my current work for example of fully good academy smart is the leadership team that i made a very good connection with for me that's one of the most important things especially when you are in business development it's it's critical i guess you need to be on the same page in order to grow the business together and um how i got here um as I was, you know, growing as a professional, I was, as I was growing as um, an employee, I've always had some ambitions. I always wanted something more, a little bit more. Um, and that was actually an interesting situation when um, we've got um, a chief business officer, or head of sales assigned from the outside. And I felt myself so bad because I thought, you know, that this position should have been mine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay. I actually went to my CEO and I told him, like, I don't agree with this. And I thought this position should have been mine. And he listened to me and he was a little bit, I guess, he was a little bit surprised because he didn't expect me to be so straightforward and, you know, open about this. But after some time, this uh, head of sales, they didn't, I mean, it didn't work. N neither for us nor for them. And I've got this position. So that's where I am still. And I started growing my team. We started from just me and another colleague of mine. And now we have 11 people. And if we look at Salix, it actually, I think it came naturally because through my career in Academy Smart, quite a lot of people from time to time were asking me about some sales advice, some business development hints. And I thought, why don't, you know, I make it a little bit more uh, unified or official so that I would have my own business, at least a side business where I could help people. Because, you know, for me, business development and sales is not about um, selling something. It's about finding the solution for the problems that people might have and finding them in the best 
possible way. And I'm sincere um, because, you know, I paid forward by helping people. So yeah. that, that's, that's the long story short. <laughs> yeah, but it's a great story. Yeah? So, uh, so the story of uh, becoming the leader, which you are right now, is um, nobody would say that, um, that they dreamt or uh, yeah, uh, focused, uh, stated, studied for doing sales, which is really awkward because it's <laughs> a great profession. Uh, you got your master degrees on the age of 21. You were studying international business and, uh, well, you, you just applied for a job um, on a suggestion of one of your professors, yeah. which just, you just take that job and didn't hurt you. You, you have the, the vision of, well, it doesn't hurt to try. Uh, you started the job and you're still with that company and because there are great people over there and uh, yeah. you got a great connection with your leadership team especially in development it's it's really important to be on the same page to be successful together yeah. and in earlier days you always wanted more so you had like the the, the driving spirit the motivational spirit to make something of your life and to make something of your work uh, so you started, but at a certain point, uh, there was a position in which they hired uh, an external per uh, person to fill in that position. Uh, and you debated with your uh, director <laughs> who wanted the job and that you find it awkward that they hired an external one yeah. because there was a great person, you, <laughs> inside the company. <laughs> And and now, uh, after a while, she left and you got that position and you're still uh, in that zone. Uh, and it comes naturally to you. Um, you have a great team, which you've built from scratch till uh, what it is right now. And you love it to do sales advice, which makes it more uh, unified to help people and uh, in finding solutions for problems. And you love it to do it in a sincere way, uh, sincere way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah. a great summary again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I'll just notate what you say because it's uh, lovely and uh, well, uh, and and a great, great vision, great leader. It's also also the purpose of this. Um, uh, podcast because we uh, we bring inside great leaders with great inspirational visions and um, my opinion is that people and the world leads the, yeah, needs to uh, to get more people inside which are great leaders with great visions which help people to transfer from the problems which we are in right now to a more um, yeah, more a unified spirit that uh, we can handle this uh, this world and we can handle the problems and we can create great things. We're creative. We're, and most of the people, they are sincere. They love doing the good stuff. And, well, let's stimulate that. So it's lovely. All right. Uh, the next one is um, uh, just react on quotes. And uh, I'll give you some quotes and um, you mm -hmm. just react on what I say as fast as you can. Okay. People, are, people are sincere. Yeah, well, not always. <laughs> but I, I love to think about them this way. I hope they are. Yeah, so, so you have the hope that people are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This world needs strong leaders. Oh, yeah, I agree with that 100%. Why? Because um, as one of my very good connections from Ireland actually says to me quite often, um, inspire others by being a good leader. And the others might also, you know, see something unique in them. Because this world sometimes takes um, a weird turn. And I think if there would be more sincere, good leaders, the world just could be a better place. Yeah, it's true. They call it the VUCA world. Huh? The world is voluntary, uncertain, complex, ambiguity, which means that it goes as fast as hell. 
uh, in these days. And the complex complex, complexity of the problems are huge and everything is connected uh, with with each other. Uh, and uh, it it makes people uncertain. So you have to be flexible and you have to be inspirational. You have to uh, be connective with other people to solve the problems which are there. And it's, it's like you said, the world just takes, sometimes takes a weird, weird turn. And then we need uh, strong leaders, uh, which helps people to get out of that situation. Yeah. It's true. Okay. Uh, female leaders are better than the male leaders. I don't know, honestly. <laughs> I I don't think so because I think it doesn't depend on sex because I I know so many great men leaders, male leaders, I know amazing and very inspirational female leaders. I mean, it doesn't depend on sex. If the person is genuine, if they have great ideas, if they can inspire others, it doesn't matter. That's true. Yeah. And I think it's true. In the first uh, series of uh, Plevere and Inspir- Inspirational Leaders, we talked about feminine and masculine energy, which is in everyone. And some leaders have a little bit more masculine energy. Yeah. Some pe- leaders have a little bit more feminine uh, energy. Some are well balanced. Mm-hmm. But it's, uh, it's true. It's all about being genuine and it's all about inspiring inspire people with great ideas and motivate them to see their talents etc i love that uh, that uh, that vision it's uh, really nice okay the last one um i have the skills to transform the world is is it about you or me or it's uh... <laughs> about you so so the, st- the 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 statement is okay i have the, the i have the skills and the knowledge to transform the world the yeah. talents to transform the world well unfortunately i think that my um how would you say that uh, my leverage is too small to make a big difference but what i strongly believe in just you have to always start from changing the world around you um and if the people see you doing something in a new way in a different way they might follow your example um because i don't believe in like you know we are a little people we are small people now i think If you do something differently or if you try to make change, even in your nearby environment, that already makes a difference. It's true. Yeah. And it it, it can work like uh, when you uh, throw a rock at at, uh, at a pool or a, uh, at a lake <laughs> and you, you see it bounce. It makes circles, right? Yeah. Which yeah. expand. So always see what's your influence. And uh, and if you influence some someone around you, inspire them then maybe they, they get inspired too. So, um, well, it's not so. So if you resume this exercise, then you could say, well, uh, in sincere, uh, am, I, am I sincere? Not always, but I'm great at uh, creating hope. Um, uh, do, oh, is, is, uh, sorry for interrupting you. Yeah. W- are, was it about me being always sincere? People. So, so oh, are yeah. people sincere? Not always, but but I create yeah. hope. Uh, sorry. Um The second one was, uh, we need strong leaders. Uh, yeah, yes, we need them uh, to inspire yeah. others, to uh, to show good actions. The world just sometimes takes a weird uh, turn, and sometimes we need strong leaders, which leads the way. Um, in the difference between female versus male leaders, are they better? Well, don't, th- don't th- think so. It doesn't depend on sex. If you're genuine and you have great ideas, then uh, your leadership will take a great uh, turn because people follow great examples. And uh, do I have the skills, the knowledge and the talent to transform the world? Well, uh, maybe my leverage is too small, but you have to start with your inner circle, your, the circle mm-hmm. uh, close to you, to change the world around you and uh, people might follow your lead. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, And we love this one, so then we're cheering. <laughs> Very good. Okay, last last exercise is um, 
If you would uh, state a tip or an advice, what does what do people and the world need in strong leadership? What's your advi advice for people who want to become a leader? That's the first one. And what's your advice towards the world, uh, people working for organizations, um, especially the leaders? What would you advise? What's your tip? Well, again, I would advise to be genuine. Just because I've seen so many great examples and being natural always is always the best strategy, I guess. Just because you is is you and um, it's not going to change. The, th the second thing that I would advise, uh, keep always learning. Not only by you know reading the books, which is definitely important, but by listening to others, um, hearing other opinions, because sometimes we get too um, how you say that too consumed by ourselves, but our, but by our everyday routine that we might not see some things, but from the outside it might be better seen, right? <laughs> so. Yeah. That's the second thing. Um, the thing that I think is important is to try to always stay positive, how complicated it may be. Just because if your team, for example, gets depressed or faces some challenges, you're going to be the only person who have to support them and show them another way. Or, I mean, it's it's hard sometimes because people may get burned out They might not like their results and your uh, job is to motivate them to keep on going and to reach a good results. So being positive actually helps a lot, how challenging it might be. And yeah, again, once again, um, try to still think about what's important um, and not what's about what's, what's good, right? Think about what's right. Especially if you work for the company, right? You always have to combine the things like what's good and what's needed. And it's not always the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, just try to think about the, the bigger things, the strategic things always. Yeah, it's nice. So, so uh, your advice to the world and leaders in the organization is to be genuine, be natural. It's the best strategy. Be you. You is you. It, it's yeah. it's the best way to, to get around. Uh, the second one is that you keep always learning. So so read books, but also listen to others. And sometimes we're too consu consumed uh, with our own lives and our own tasks and our own responsibilities. And sometimes it's better for the world to uh, take a look outside where, mm -hmm. to see what's the impact of your behavior for others and what you yeah. can do to influence them better. The third one is uh, stay positive. How complicated it may be, uh, you are the one who can stimulate and support people to keep on going and to, to be uh, stimulated in their work. And the last one is also, it can be a challenge, but the last one is also like focus on what's right and important and what's good and needed. It's not always the same thing. So you have to figure out what's good, what's needed. How can we bring those together yeah. to, to get the best result for me, the team, the organization and the client? Yeah. I think it's a, it's a lovely uh, vision on uh, leadership. And I want to thank you a lot for your vision. It's inspirational. I always uh, find it inspirational to talk to you, but um, I was right. My intuition was right. I <laughs> have to get her in my podcast. We talk to each other soon. Keep inspiring each other. And, uh, well, have a nice weekend later on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fav, once again. Um, wishing you all a great weekend as well. Take care. Your eyes look to the sky, the 
sun will shine on us.